My name is Chris Apia. I am the founder and owner of The Sales Arms. Uh, the Sales Arms is a boutique firm uh, that helps assist uh, fitness studio owners and managers in their day-to-day -day sales, management, and marketing processes. I have been working in the fitness industry uh, for over a decade now from uh, general management in big box studios, uh, working in connected fitness uh, for Peloton, uh, and then also working in uh, the franchise model when for exponential fitness, traveling the country, training general managers, system managers, and front desk employees on the in-studio sales process lead management and member management. And that's what brought me uh, to where we are today at the sales arms. Uh, I realized that in my travels going across the country, while studios um, tend to have an issue staffing, um, one of the most consistent parts of the business tends to always fall by the wayside because of that, right? And that's that lead management. So we created the sales arms to be the first line of defense for a studio owner to make sure no matter what happens on the ground, your lead management and your follow-up and your member management is always going to continue to happen. How many studios would you say that you work with at this time that you're seeing like across the country? Yeah, yeah. So so right now we, we, we're working with about 80 studios uh, across the country from East Coast all the way to Hawaii. Uh, so it does give us a, a unique perspective on different demographics, offers that work well in a, in a certain, you know, a more dense community as, as compared to a more rural suburban area, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the work that we do being, you know, across the country with so many different types of brands allows us to just kind of get a bird's eye view and a general idea of what is working best throughout the country in those different demographics. So it allows us to give you know, good advice to people in these similar markets. Just from your perspective, why do you think it's important to have introductory offers for new clients rather than just allowing them to walk in the door and say, here's a drop-in class or here are our regularly priced memberships yeah. or packages. Yeah, I think an intro, an intro offer is very important because at the end of the day, fitness is still a scary thing to start for a lot of people. And not everybody knows exactly what they, what they want to do. And where we are in the space now with so many different modalities, you have all your friends who, you have one friend who cycles, you have one friend who does bar, you have one friend who does yoga, one does F45, right? And you're sitting here like, I just want to get fit, right? You, you don't know what's going to be best for you. So I think having these intro offers allows for a more comfortable, you know, introduction to your business, your modality, not only that, your staff and your team, right? Because I think what sets set studios apart in the biggest way now is that community and how you connect when you do come into uh, a facility. So intro offers do a great job of allowing people to what I like to call stick their toe in the water, right? Like try it out, see if it's going to be good for them. And not only is that workout going to be good for them, but is that community going to be good for them? Okay, and so then what should I be trying to achieve as the studio by like through my intro offer? You mentioned I want to allow my clients to dip a toe in the water, but like, should I just be making it super attractive to get a bunch of people in the door? What am I looking to get, do here? So there's, that's a good question, right? Because there's, there's, two, there's two sides to it, right? Some, some people are in a place where they want to get as many people in the door as possible. Whereas others want a real quality, a more quality person who, who knows maybe a little bit more of what they want. Um, and that depends on where you are in the business, right? I think somebody that is in the earlier stages of, of their studio, it's always best to get as many people in as possible, right? So, so if, 
with that, right, you want, you'll see often like a first class free or maybe first class for a dollar. In my personal opinion, I think it's best to do a discounted first class, right, uh, as opposed to a free class for two reasons. One, because you know that this person is a little bit more serious. They have a little bit of skin in the game, right? There's so many people out there that do free where, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really have, you don't have too much commitment to it, right? Um, so that's, that's one end. The second side is it's always great to capture somebody's credit card information for your business, right? So that in the instance that they love it, it's just a one click to join. It's very, very easy, right? You don't have to go back and figure out it, you know, what their credit card information is, put that in there, like right? everything like that. So, so to to really to bring it back, right? I think if you're if you're really looking to just get an influx of leads into your business, do a free class. That 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 will definitely get people in the door. Are they going to be the most quality people? Not always, right? And if you're looking for a little bit more of a high quality lead coming in, do a discounted first class, whether it be a dollar or maybe uh, half off your drop in, whatever that is, right? So that somebody feels like they are still getting something, but you as the business are also almost getting a level of commitment from that, that prospect because they're giving you their credit card to purchase that discounted offer. Capturing the credit card to not do a free class. Um, <laughs> and also I love that you broke this down. We think about it so much in terms of like, what's your offer dependent on your market. But I like that you broke this down depending on your stage of business. That's that's one thing. And and I actually, when, when you reached out, I went back to my team. We all got together to really give a true perspective on these intro offers. And one thing that we found, you know, you know, I just broke it down from where you are in the stage of business. The other place that we broke it down was the number of modalities that you have. Yeah. So if you're a one modality, you know, boutique fitness studio, we believe that it's best that you, you have like a discounted uh, class intro offer knowing in the back of, the, of your head that you're willing to give another free class for that person to really figure out if it's the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of that, a two-week unlimited um, offer normally weeds out those people who, who will become an unlimited member for you. So in a single modality, we believe it's best to do a single class offer or two week unlimited. Whereas in a, in a multiple modality studio, maybe your studio does cycling strength and yoga, right? That's when we think it's best to have a, a three class offer or that two week unlimited as well, right? So we, we like the three class offer there because the, the person's gonna to wanna to take more than one modality in your business, you're going to want them to want to take more than more than one modality um, while they're there, so they can get the full effect of what you have to offer. Um, but what's most important with that three with that three class is making sure that there is a seven day expiration limit on it, so that you have control of the sales cycle. Right, that's one of the reasons why we like that two week unlimited. Because we know at the end of that two weeks, this person has to make a decision, right? So to, to, to bring it back, right? If you have a single modality studio, a discounted first class or a two-week unlimited are the best intro offers that we're seeing uh, on our end. And if you have a multi-modality uh, uh, studio, a three-class a three class, um intro offer with a seven day expiration, or again, that two week, unli two week unlimited. Um, 
And just to add in, that two week unlimited always stays there because we've seen that if you give somebody a two week unlimited and you truly nurture them through that, that two week experience, you have the highest chance of converting that person into an unlimited member. Whereas when you only have that one, one or two class or that, or that three class, that person doesn't know necessarily yet if they can be an unlimited member, right? In, in most cases, they're like, at least I know I can come one to two times in that week and you can get them started at maybe a lower membership offer at, at that point and nurture them into an unlimited. Okay, great. So it sounds like often you're talking like two different intro offers to offer up to new clients side by side. Yeah, we always we always like to do two different intro offers because the alternate choice allows for an easy an easy pick for the prospect, mm-hmm. right? It, it, it's one or two. And what we have found is somebody who's very, very new to fitness or not sure of themselves, they normally go with the class credit intro offer whereas somebody who is an exerciser and is truly just trying to find a new community or find a new workout that to, to do and see if they like they tend to to gravitate more toward the two-week unlimited and then again they tend to convert to an unlimited member after mm-hmm. that because those people tend to know more so what they want to do Uh, It's just a matter of figuring out if it's the right fit for them and if it's the right community for them. Pricing model, having this tiered pricing ladder that so many industries follow. So do you see that, do you think that that could work if like you assume your good is just your normal drop-in that you might have to have visible anyway for someone to book? So if then, do do you think it works to have your drop-in and then two specific new client intros, specials? I think so because when you when you pitch this to a prospect, right, you want to start at right. that drop in, right? That's that highest rate. Yeah, everybody can come in at this drop in rate, but if this is something that you want to do on a regular basis, our clients tend to go to either this offer or this offer, right? And those and those will normally be lower because you're buying more classes at one time, but it allows for the prospect to understand, oh, these classes are normally $35. Right. But if I act on this today, and this is something that I know I want to do, I'm only going to pay $25 per class, right? But if you don't start at that high point, then it, it, it doesn't resonate with the prospect that they're saving money. They assume whatever the first thing you start with is that high point and then you can go somewhere from there so if you don't want to be a heavily a heavy discount studio right you don't want to be discounting your packages and your memberships you have to always start with that that drop-in point and then bring them down to your your memberships or your intro offers so they understand the value of of what they're getting in terms of the discount what would you say is the most common mistake that you see studios make in terms of their introductory offers? Easiest answer for me is this one, is the fact that people sell an introductory offer but don't nurture somebody through the introductory period, right? You, 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 if you give somebody a two-week unlimited and you don't talk to them to the end of that two weeks, right, there's no rapport that was built. That person doesn't ha- doesn't, can't, a full sense of community you don't know what that person's needs are to convert them right so an intro offer is great that's going to get them through the door but like i said in the beginning it's creating community and culture and letting somebody feel like this is where they belong that gets them to truly convert at the end and so many studios just sell 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 and then they're on to the next sale Right, like, and and it's not necessarily their fault. They don't have the bandwidth in terms of staff to actually do all that nurturing, but also sell. Make sure the washing machine's not broken. 
Make sure the front desk staff is on time, right? There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot that goes on in the studio that takes you away from these more tedious necessary activities, right? So I think the one thing that I want people to take home from that is if you're going to have an intro offer, whether it be one class, three class, or two week unlimited, you need to make sure you're following up with that individual after each one of their classes to make sure that they're enjoying themselves, to see if there's anything you guys can do better as a business, right? Because that's going to translate to I care about my clients, each one individually, to make sure that they're having a great experience in our facility. Awesome. So we talked a bit about like what makes an effective intro offer in terms of timing, number of classes, all of that. Are there other things that you add into intro offers? Is there anything else that should be included or is, is it really focused on the classes, the services, the modality? In, in my opinion, I think it should just simply focus on the classes, uh, the experience and the modality. When you start to add more things into it, uh, it starts to cloud the, the true focus, which is, do you like this workout? Do you like our community? Do you want to join, right? There's other, that, that brings other things to think about when at the end of the day, if you can keep the objections to really just price, right? And that'd be the only thing that they think about. I think that puts you in the best place. But when you add, when you start to add extra incentives in those intro offers, it just gets confusing. Now, again, as, as our sales expert, how does an intro offer really affect the sales process? So your intro offer is going to dictate your sales cycle in, in most cases how long it may take for somebody to actually become a member. Um, and that is why we, we suggest, right, doing that single class and maybe giving an extra free class or doing those three classes and having it end in seven days so that you, you can stay fresh mm -hmm. in a prospect's mind and, and, and help actually create a routine, right? You don't want somebody to have a two week pass and come once this week and maybe come once next week, right? You want them to, to come two, three times in a week, help create a routine and, and the, your intro offer should help guide them through that, right? So I think it's, it's very important to control the sales cycle with your, with your intro offer and try to get somebody within seven to 14 days to a true membership or package for, for your facility. Okay. So even though it's maybe an unlimited offer, you're suggesting that you kind of still guide them as far as how to utilize that. Exactly. And even though you know that person has two weeks, right? In that first week, wow, you 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 seem like you're going to be a two-time, three-time-a-week exerciser mm -hmm. at our facility, right? Painting the picture of of what their habits that they're what they're doing right now, how that can become a habit, and how you how you compare that to other clients you've seen in your facility. Do that, right? Because people want to also feel like they're they're successful, like the other people that are around them, right? So, like in, in that first week, setting the tone of what membership you think is going to be best for them, what package you think is going to be best for them. Not hard selling, but just planting these seeds and just letting them know, I, you know, Jane was just like you. She came three times in her first week, only once in her, in her second week, but she knew from there that she would be able to come at least eight to 10 times in the month. I think you'll probably be an unlimited member, but we'll see you after next week, you know, and just, and just continue to plant those seeds for them. I like that planting the seeds. Um, and so does that, does it, do you take a different approach when you're selling someone their intro offer versus when they finish an intro offer, you've planted those seeds and now you're selling them ongoing? How do you treat those two? Because so essentially every intro offer has two different sales. Right. So how are you treating those two sales differently? 
I don't think there's much different in how you how you treat them, right? It, it really just de- depends on how quickly you're going to get to that next that next offer, and that's dictated by the intro offer that is that is decided, right? But the language that you're going to use, the seed planting, everything like that, it just might come in a shorter period, pending which one they choose, right? If they do a two week unlimited, that's, you know, you have to drag that out because in most cases they're gonna say, all right, once I'm, once I'm done, I'll do X, Y, Z, right? And that's what you wanna hear, right? You wanna hear the commitment that they will do something before they're even done with their, with their intro offer. So I would say the differences is how, how aggressive you are in terms of getting to that next offer because of knowing where the end date is on that, on that introductory offer. And that's again, why it's very important to control that exploration so that you aren't just up in the air, wait, like trying to figure out like the, the studios that do yeah, three, three free classes. You can use it at any point in the month. You're, you're almost always going to lose that person's interest because you don't know where, when or where they're going to come in. And if you're not booking the classes for them and, and setting that precedent, then, then it tends to fall by the wayside. So do you think that, is there a difference in the unlimited versus a certain number of classes over two weeks? Can you control the conversation even further if you know how many times they're coming in that outweighs it that 100 okay. outweighs it because you don't know the type of exerciser that you're that mm. you're working with and you, you all in most cases that person that takes the two week unlimited is somebody that wants to do the most at least in a matter of two weeks but you, but you never know where, where life's going to come into play, what's going to slow them down, this, that, and the third. If you give them six classes over two weeks, right, and then they only use two or three of them, that can, mm-hmm. that can be discouraging to somebody mm-hmm. as well and make them feel like they're not going to get enough out mm-hmm. of what, they, what they're possibly going to sign up for. So, so I, again, so I, I wouldn't go over three days of free class three free classes right. for somebody because three free classes, again, you could do three classes in a week. You could do two yeah. classes in a week. You'll feel good. Even if you just do two, right? right. You're, 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 you're positive at that point, six classes versus two week unlimited. If you don't get all six, right. Maybe you only do three. You're not sure if, if you're like, you're going to be an unlimited person. Whereas you're setting you're setting your standard in the two weeks unlimited, right? Whether it only be two or three times that you come during that, that's fine, right? But you now know what you're going to do in two weeks and you can now figure out what makes sense for a month. Whereas if you only if you do six classes for a two week time span and you only do two, two classes in that time, you tend to get discouraged about yourself and your ability and what you think you can do. You know, right. psych- psychologically, it, it kind of messes with you. And, and that's when additional objections come when you're going to present a, a unlimited membership to them down the road or another, or another package. They're, they're unsure of themselves as opposed to being able to say, yeah, I came two times in my two week unlimited. So if I multiply that by another two weeks, I'll probably only be coming four to five times. This is the membership that's going to fit me best. Uh-huh. You know? So you want to you, you want to do your best to not create any negative points in that introductory time. Because again, fitness is very emotional of a purchase and of an experience. And we're very quick to doubt ourselves and go back into that, go back into that corner yep. and, and, and not do. I'm going to be honest, Chris. Um, I have always struggled with liking the unlimiteds, but I think you just converted me um, because I totally see what you're saying. The unlimited allows the 
the client the freedom to show how they're going to use the membership and what frequency of a member they're going to be. But you're still adding in that that guidance element of trying to nurture them and trying to explain to them how to use it and how many times to come. Um, but again, then still there's there's freedom within that for them to actually take your guidance and still show up as the type of member that they're going to naturally be. In, in most like, cases, the person that takes advantage of that two week unlimited is 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 the is can have the highest chance of becoming that member that you truly want. Whereas mm -hmm. people who take the single class are mm -hmm. really, really on the fence as mm -hmm. to if they can do anything or or not. Right. Personally. <laughs> like you know, and that and that is a very big hurdle to overcome. And you don't get as much time to help them overcome that in in just picking those those single classes, right? It's yeah. You your first class, how was the experience? It was great. Take another one, right? Make a decision. <laughs> right? Right, whereas, right. whereas in two weeks, you can have that same conversation after that second class and now paint the picture of where they're going to be next week to set them up for that close at the end of the at the end of the 14 days. Do you have any parting advice or the most impactful thing out of everything that we've discussed that you want studio owners to? walk away with and apply to their intro offers? The most important thing, and I cannot stress it enough, right, is if you sell somebody an intro offer, have a plan in place to nurture them. If you are not hand-holding people through their introductory offer, it, there is a very high chance that that person is not going to convert or your competition is doing a better job of making them feel handheld through that process, which creates that community feel, which makes that person go over there. Often we own a modality that has a competition within a five mile radius of us. We have to set ourselves apart by the way we communicate and we nurture our prospects. People now want to join facilities because of the community. And you're not doing, and everybody has an introductory offer. A lot of people are even free. What sets you apart is the time that's spent during that intro offer to make that person feel like this is where they belong. So if you're going to put an intro offer out, whether it be a single, single class, a free class, a two-week unlimited, you need to have a plan in place on how you're going to follow up with them and how you're going to guide them to success. Amazing. And what if I said, oh, I, I naturally do nurture all of my, my new clients. I have great conversations with them organically in the studio. I usually give them a call at some point. I usually send off some emails. What if that, is that a nurture sequence or does it need to be systemized? In that response on its own, usually, I almost always, most of the time, right? I, I, I do my best. That means there's often things that are falling through the cracks, right? So it needs to be systemized. It needs to be somebody's job to make sure that they're building rapport with every single person that comes into the facility, right? You as an owner can add in additional touch points that make it even warmer, but it has to be systemized on how you're nurturing your, your intro offers and not just your intro offers, but your members, right? Because it still takes, you know, 30 to 90 days to truly create a habit, right? And in that time is when your clients are most vulnerable to cancel. So if you have a system in place to make sure you're working with them on a week-to-week -week basis, to make sure that they're enjoying the facility, they feel good about what they're doing, you know, you're playing the music that they like, as long as you have those, that system in place, you should be, you should be in a good position to convert people into full members, full package buyers. Amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. This has been incredible. 
Um, would you like to tell studio owners how they could reach you if they're interested in working with the sales arms and having you come in and help with these things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So with us at the sales arm, our goal is to be that that consistent line of defense for your fitness business. We understand that it's very hard to staff. And even when you find staff often, these are younger people who are entry level, who have never sold anything, who, don't, who might not have a passion for your business, but they have a passion for a paycheck, right? With us at the sales arms, our goal is your goal. We don't grow unless your studio grows, right? We're here to make sure all of that tedious work of lead management, member management, follow-up, all of that happens seven days a week as your business is open seven days a week. So if you're ever interested in just figuring out if the, the services that we provide would fit your business well, um, you can email me directly at chris at the Um, You can go on our website and schedule a demo. Whatever works best for you. We'll do a discovery call to understand exactly where you where you are in your business, you know, what you come from, the struggles that you've dealt with. Uh, and then from there, create a customized program um, to assist you in your day-to-day -day sales, marketing, and management.